I'm Bob Spitzer. I've now been a psychiatrist for over 60 years. In 1961, I first met Virginia Satir and actually became her boss. In those days, a woman, a social worker, would, it was impossible almost to think of having a major grant in that person's name. However, Virginia was the only one probably on the planet who had really treated families. So I had no problem learning from her and getting a big fat paycheck. Virginia did many demonstrations at the Mental Research Institute in Palo Alto where we all started and developed quite a reputation. Uh, but, and then she was asked to interview families all around the country. And then Virginia involved the, her students, the audience, and often interaction with uh, the family and the audience so that it was a um, psychotherapeutic experience for everyone in the room. And you, and you can tell that she's working it that way. The film you're about to see captures Virginia Satir doing one of those magical family sessions for which she's famous and demonstrated all over the planet. But I want you also to pay attention to the students, to the audience. Virginia is treating everyone, including you out there. I was the publisher then of most of Virginia's books, a fellow teacher, but on this trip, I was the videographer. The, the time period in which this uh, Virginia does this family demonstration at the University of Moscow was really crucial for all this. Gorbachev was talking about things like nation states and the, there, there was much change in the USSR, but Virginia was the first family therapist allowed from the West and there, there was much anticipation that is in family therapy often secrets are a big thing we knew that there would be kgb in the audience and that probably we would not be able to detect them so how all this would go down and whether my video would be confiscated i'm not really that technically sound uh, to pull this off but there's no choice well, as you'll see, Virginia looks very good uh, throughout this trip. She did die four months later of cancer of the pancreas. So for me, it was difficult to go to even think about these films, uh, although I recognized that it had so much potential. So I learned a great deal in going back over this, and it's given me a total new appreciation of Virginia. She never saw this, but on her deathbed, literally, she did tell me to go work on it. <laughs> and I'm real glad that I did. Sit back and enjoy the trip. First stop, Moscow, then Vilnius, Lithuania, Georgia, and we end up in Leningrad. All aboard.
most important thing is my meeting people that have the same heart feeling that I do. And and knowing that they want the same thing and you and you know it for sure. And so when you know that, you have love and bridges across the people. And one of the things I would hope is that everybody in the United States knew and felt what I knew and felt. And then we'd have changes. <laughs> I'm very privileged to be here. I have thought a long time and hoped a long time to be in the USSR. I would like to share some things with you about how I work. And uh, some of you may know that I was one of the first people, I guess in the world, I don't know, to start working with families in a way to help create better people. This year, I have been 52 years a professional. That helps you and me to know how much I've already seen. I work with thinking about people as being a part of a whole system. And I work from the standpoint of creating wellness. And I want to now go as though, speaking from I, making changes, and maybe you can think of yourself as the you making the changes that I am talking about. Find out if there's somebody here who would be willing to come on a stage with me and be met by me. I know he's a wonderful one. Why do I know that? Because he's a manifestation of life. And he's the only one exactly like him in the whole world. We'll always have something alike. То есть во всяком случае мы можем быть уверены, что что-то общее между нами есть. Yeah, we'll always be different. И в то же время есть очень много разного. That means all children are different from each other and from their parents. Everybody is unique. Каждый уникален. Now, if I didn't know that then I could start comparing him with somebody. I don't compare him, he can't be compared. Now, as I come to meet someone, these are the thoughts that I have. I'm going to meet a unique being, an original. So, as I, before I ever even look at him, before I ever know his name, I know he's a wonderful one, and I'm not talking about his behavior. That's different from approaching him, oh, I wonder what he's done wrong. Yeah. Oh, he's sure, he's, I don't know what. Thing to do with trying to help people to change, need to have an ally in that person. And that ally is this spirit that I'm talking to and about. As to courtesy, lovingness, I will use as I come to meet him. That he and I together will come to meet in his, what I call his life force. So the first thing has to do with my approach. How do I see him? Now, the next thing. I am preparing for this wonderful celebration which is that I'm going to take away from my awareness anything except my awareness of him. Have you ever met anybody and you knew their bodies were there but their mind was someplace else? Here's a person standing here and... And you shake hands and you don't meet. Now, think how it would have been when we were little children if our parents were always present with us when they talked to us. If I'm not present, I can't meet you. Where we would shake hands, right here, this would be the place where what I call the second skins meet, or the presence boundaries meet, right here. 
First of all, we all have ideas about power and authority. And that the presence of another person can activate those ideas of power and authority. We have a lot of people in the United States that are 40, 50 years old, and they still talk about being afraid of their mothers. All right, this is a very important part of helping people to become well, is that they can feel equal to every other human being. Now, if he would be depressed, and all of his energy moves in, you move yourself in like this, in, 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 that's Таким образом, вся, tight, tight, вся energy 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 to be in touch with the energy from another person and yourself is basic to the healing process. Can I ask you a question? Of course. Where do we get so much energy? First of all, I have a very positive attitude toward myself and everyone else. It doesn't mean I'm right. It only means I respect the value of being human. In me and someone else. Прежде всего, у меня очень положительный подход, положительное отношение к себе и к другим людям. Это, это не означает, что я во всем права, но просто я уважаю то, I... чувство, чувство самоценности. So that it's this wholeness is moving back and forth. That's one thing. So that energy moves out and it moves back. The other thing is, if I have a question, I will ask it. <laughs> So I don't keep anything, and I don't keep things in, inside. I think we trap a lot of energy in our bodies by saying to ourselves, oh, we got that feeling, but we shouldn't have it. But I know how much energy opens up when you give yourself the freedom to feel whole. Но я знаю, как много энергии высвобождается, если вы освобождаете себя. About what? Well, I'm amazed that everything is really so available on some level. It's so different from what it was 10 years ago. You said something about colors. And the color, yes. Because you look in the shops and you see all the pretty bright colors. You look on the streets and people are are getting to, uh, get to bright colors. But there aren't as many yet as there will be, I think. Does it remind you of America? Of yes, it sure time? does. Sure does. Present time or past? Past. When we were all Victorian and strapped to the work ethic. People can tell you're an American. That's true, and it's rather difficult to tell that they're Russians. <laughs> <laughs> because when they, we look so much alike, I'm, you know. When I think about Virginia and her work, when she was teaching at the University of Moscow, she's been with the family. And since then, I have been in her, in her pull uh, to see a reconstruction, or maybe two or three, in the, in, the, in the context of Russian life today, because that would help to, to see the richness of the path and the journey of the Russian people. And so I think that would be another vehicle to use in looking at how to disseminate Virginia's models and theories and practices to 
to, to bring it to Russia and to maybe integrate people, people making stuff. Anybody that would be a native Russian would have a tremendous history in their family in three generations about all the things that we're trying to grapple with and understand about Russia and have them share with us. We can see that in how it impacted people's lives, like the reconstruction process, and see then how that healing can help the people here with their own awarenesses and discoveries about shame and guilt and truth and untruth and how the people now are, are the older people in our generation are, who were very supportive and pro Stalin are now finding out that he was a less desirable leader than they thought and they have to now either reject that information or reframe and make a different kind of meaning out of their whole history of their own past, their life. We're looking at Alex at eye level too. И чтобы Алек тоже стоял с вами на одном уровне. Now I need to know something. Is it all right for you to hear Larissa's feelings? И я, я хочу знать тебе интересно тебе хотелось бы узнавать о чем что переживает Лариса. Да. Okay. Now one of the things I heard at the beginning is that you sometimes felt anguish about the way that Michael was dealing with Alec. И вы сказали вначале, что испытывали чувство досады по отношению к тому, как складываются отношения Михаила и Алика. Did I remember that right? Okay. Yeah. Now, can you tell him what it is that goes on inside of you to make you feel that anguish with, when these two are, when he's dealing with, with Alec? Вы чувствуете в себе способность выразить Каким образом выражается эта досада в вас, когда они сталкиваются между собой? Надо сказать прямо Надо сказать ему, что происходит у вас, когда вы начинаете Но мне не хочется, чтобы они ругались, чтобы и ему не надо, и плохо. Я хочу, чтобы между ними было взаимопонимание и... I don't want this quarrel. I want them to understand each other. I don't want both of them to feel worse. Okay. As they have quarrel, they don't like each other, don't love each other. Are, do you really believe they don't love each other? No, I don't believe they don't love each other. No, I don't no, so then that thought you go out there because you don't believe it. Поэтому эту мысль можно сразу отбросить, потому что вы в нее не верите. What happens here is that Michael begins to feel that people don't understand he wants to give them something. Просто что сейчас происходит, это то, что Михаил осознает, что люди не понимают иногда, что он хочет им что-то дать. Now while you're still here, feeling each other here, I'd like to ask you. How much alike or different was your growing up to Michael's? Мне хотелось бы знать, вот сейчас, когда вы стоите и держите друг друга за руки, отличалась ли отличалась ли ваша семья, в которой вы выросли, от семьи Михаила? Да. Нет. Was it very similar? Нет, было похоже? Или отличалось? It differed more, but there was something which was the same. What parts were the same? <coughs> we, also, we also had some problems between father and mother in law. Grandmother. Uh, okay, and when you saw your father and your grandmother having things like this, what happened for you? И когда происходили эти конфликты в семье, что что вы чувствовали? Что происходило с вами? 
Ну, я расстраиваюсь, скажем так. А это upset. Okay. When you felt upset, what did you do with that feeling? What Michael did was to to just close close his mouth and just observe. What did you do? И когда вы расстраивались, как вы реагировали на это? Миша в таких случаях не участвовал, он был просто наблюдателем. А что вы делали? Ну, чаще всего тоже молчал. Но иногда маме там что-то скажут, но уже в отсутствии всех остальных. Только ей. Most of the time I kept silent. Uh, but uh, when everybody were absent, I tried to say, to tell something, but only, only to my mother. Did your mother hear you? А мама слушала тебя? Не всегда, редко. Not, not uh, every time, sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Now, I want to say something to you about this wonderful one here. Теперь я хочу поговорить с вами об этом чудесном создании. I think he is in the same boat, that he has lots of feelings, and he keeps his mouth up. И мне кажется, что у него ведь та же самая ситуация. У него, его переполняют всякие чувства, эмоции, и он все их держит в себе. You believe that could be true? Может это так быть? Do you believe that could be true? No, it wasn't. Okay. Now, what I'd like you to do now is let him know that you want to know what his feelings are. You don't want to be in the same position. You want him to be in the same position that you were to your parents. You want to know what his feelings are. Did you tell him that? А вы ему говорите когда-нибудь, что вы не хотите, чтобы он был в том же положении, в каком вы были в своих семьях, когда росли? Когда-нибудь вы ему говорите об этом? Нет, никогда не говорил. No, never. Could you do it? Could you say to him? Могли бы ему сказать это сейчас? I want to know what your feelings are. Я хочу, чтобы ты знал, что мы чувствуем. Could you tell him that now? Можешь сейчас ему сказать? To take his hands and tell him that. Взять его руки и сказать. Я хочу, чтобы ты знал, что мы чувствуем. А вот у тебя вот это будет. Could you say I feel? Хочешь сказать не мы, а я. That you feel. Я хочу, чтобы ты знал, что я чувствую. Все время, каждый раз, когда я с тобой говорю, я хочу, чтобы ты знал, что я чувствую. You want to know his feelings. Я, я хочу знать, что ты чувствуешь в это время. Да, я хотел бы знать, что ты чувствуешь. Алек, ты сейчас веришь папе, что он действительно хочет знать об этом? It's very important. Это очень важно. Makes so much difference. Это очень важно, это может многое изменить. What you would like him to know now, how you would like him to feel confident about himself and how you would like to teach him to do that. И сейчас, что ты хотел бы сказать ему? Как ему надо научиться быть уверенным в себе? Что ему надо для этого сделать? Мог бы ты ему сказать сейчас об этом? Да, пожалуй, говори то, что думаешь, Сергей. Чего вот не сильно. Ну, то, что хочешь сейчас сказать, говори мне. Tell what you want to say. Yeah. Попытаюсь тебя понять. I will try to understand you. Только так я смогу тебя понять. And this way I will be able to understand you. How does that feel for you, Alec, to hear that? А что ты сейчас чувствуешь, Алек, когда слышишь, что папа говорит? He would like you to tug him right now, take him in your arms. Are you aware of that? Может быть, сейчас ты хочешь его... Ты понимаешь? Может быть, ты сейчас хочешь взять его, а мне? Хочешь? Yes. And you can do that many times. Это можно это делать очень часто. Да. Практически непрерывно. А что вы чувствуете, когда видите эту сцену? Радость. А что ты чувствуешь, Алекс? 
just the same. Just the same. Ah, wonderful. Now, while you're here with your daddy, this is a very special place to be. Сейчас ты со своим папой. Это очень необычное место, очень особенное место. And your daddy can have things with you that he didn't have with his daddy. И может быть твой папа может получить с тобой то, что он не смог получить от своего папы. Yes, he already knows that. И он знает сейчас об этом. And you can have things with him that you didn't have with your dad. Ты тоже можешь получить от общения, от вашего общения, то, что не получил от своей семьи, от своего папы. Now, as I see you look at him, when he's over here, of course, then uh, he's over here. But there must be times you want to take him in your arms. И сейчас я тебе приятно смотреть, что они вместе. Но иногда, конечно, тебе самой хочется обнять его. Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> so, you probably wouldn't do it now, but you could. You could say... So if you want to hold him, just reach out for him. Uh -oh. You go ahead, you can do that. You want to hold him? Lots and lots of that. Now, you two have something for each other, don't you? <laughs> yes? Chris, Chris will have a hug. <laughs> we'll have a hug. <laughs> okay, I want to stop now. And I want to tell you something. As I've been working with you, I have been getting all these wonderful love feelings for you. Я хочу вам сказать, что когда мы были вместе, когда я беседовал с вами, меня переполняло чувство любви. И когда меня переполняет это чувство, я обычно хочу людей обнять. Вы не возражаете? Хорошо, <laughs> Его мы оставим напоследок. And the context consisted of her being uh, fully present to the people that she was meeting. So she gave her absolute full attention with certain attitudes. And the attitude is of deep respect for the people that she's working with. And they will be partners with her in discovering, uh, not a problem, but discovering where their growth is blocked. And by the use of herself in contact with those people, Virginia is saying, everything that you see, you feel, you think, is safe to say. Identifying one's feeling, I feel sad now. In, in interaction, when it happens, to be able to label your feeling, I uh, I feel like I didn't, they didn't understand me, or I feel left out, so that they can identify what they feel, express it, and then make come to a resolution. Uh, okay, uh, uh, many of our children are are worried. Uh, they they wonder, uh, will they have time to grow up? Uh, we want all our children to know um, that we can share our world together so that we don't have to have someone who's the boss and someone who has to obey in our world. You understand? Yes. Have you written letters? Yes. And I will take your letter. And, yes. and did you write, is your letter in English? And I will 
Okay. We'll try to find children uh, that have similar interests to your interests. And uh, now we uh, the sing a song to you. Okay, wonderful. In English. All right. Okay. 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 I mean, I do, as what did those two learn from their growing up, which is the basis of what they're trying to do here. The things that I do is to help people to free themselves simply to share what they're feeling at a moment in time. What I was talking about was that human beings uh -huh. are made of pure spirit. Uh -huh. okay? Their behavior is something that they have learned. Yes. Their behavior is not the same as them. Yes. If I want to help them with their behavior, I need to connect with their spirit so the spirit and I can help with their behavior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, 
That's the first piece of that. And since human beings are always trying mm -hmm. to do the best they can, mm -hmm. which I believe, mm -hmm. a lot of times mm -hmm. they come out doing very bad things because they don't know any better. Okay? Okay. okay. But I have been struck by how open and receptive uh, Moscow therapists have been to us and how our communication with them is not different from communication with therapists back home. They're knowledgeable about uh, theories in England and uh, Freudian Jungian theories. They've read Virginia's material. They um, know Carl Rogers' work, they have a humanistic orientation. In some ways they're less resistive to a humanistic orientation than many places we could visit in the United States. And out of that grew a curiosity on my part about how such openness evolved in Moscow. I wonder how, how your membership or non-membership in the Communist Party, you, how you see that related to your work and how it complements or interferes in any way? Как это, как вот членство партии влияет на работу или нет? Это дополняет или мешает работе? Или вообще как оно мешает в смысле как-то придет, ну понимаешь, что-то не дает? How it relates? Как оно связано с работой членства в партии? Как ты считаешь? Я считаю, что э, в нашей работе я как психотерапевт должна быть полностью представлена. Когда я ощущаю полное чувство, когда я есть полностью я Тогда я могу хорошо работать. Это мой работы. Work, I think that one of the main conditions of good work is that I am whole as I am. Mm -hmm. И поскольку я вступила в партию, потому что я разделяю основные идеи коммунистической and, and because партии. I entered the party because I um, I share main, the main ideas of, common, of the Communist Party. То естественно, то естественно, это также присутствует мои коммунистические там верования, убеждения, также присутствуют в моей работе как я, как часть меня. It is very natural that my these uh, my communist uh, beliefs are in my work as I am in this work. Yeah. I was interested in um, what the changes that you've seen in the last four or five years. How would you describe them? Here yes. in Moscow, three years. Well. Fresh air and life, <laughs> new yeah. life and new hopes, very serious hopes for real possibility for real work, just hopes for the time being, yes. because re changes for the time being have, are happening in the sphere of mass communication mainly, yes. and well, ideological policy, I think, and political policy. Mm -hmm. <coughs> These are foreign uh, and in, internal. Uh -huh. Opportunities open because of Gorgia. The interpreter that's uh -huh. here for Virginia, yeah. about, about the KGB and whether they were uh, sort of part of us or with us. And he said, why would they be interested in you? You're harmless. Your group is harmless, absolutely harmless. <laughs> <laughs> I had to laugh about that because they're asking about well, if you really teach self-esteem and raising the people's self-worth, don't you then change the context of what they do politically and socially and economically and what they want and how they stand up and doesn't that cause maybe civil disobedience and doesn't that cause other problems? And he, then he sort of looked at me sort of surprised, but his initial thing of looking at Virginia what she's been about is that she's no threat to the, to the way of life here or to the ideology or to anything else here, so I thought that was an interesting response. Do you do a school? School. Yes, yes, yes. And so now at this point in my life, I know that wellness is a direction that we need to try to understand and we need to try to accomplish. И это направление, которое нам следует понять и постараться достичь его. Мы не так хорошо знаем о том, что это такое. Мы 
Я думаю, что сейчас э, началась совершенно новая фаза, совершенно новое осознание того, что означает быть человеком. У нас впереди прекрасная возможность. I want to invite you without demanding. I want to leave you without guilt. And I want to criticize you without blaming. And help you without insulting. And if I can have the same from you, that we can truly meet and enrich each other. Hello. 